Hey guys, Plastic Commander here, and firstly, I'm sorry there hasn't been any new Plastic Commander content lately. Um, a couple of reasons why. For one, I've been sick with a pretty gnarly head cold the past week, and I just haven't felt like recording. And uh, two, since it's the holiday season, my job has just been absolutely slammed. I work retail, so as you can imagine, I've been busy and having to work more hours than usual, so I just haven't had the time. And three, I've been having some car issues that I've been having to also put a lot of my extra time into. But uh, there will be a new Army Men review here in the next couple of days. Uh, so if you're one of the army men fans and you don't want to watch this video, you don't have to. You know, I'm really just doing this video for me more than anything else. Um, and what this video is, it's going to be me reading some of my original poetry. Uh, those of you who know me personally, you know that I write poetry. And I thought it would be fun for me personally if I sat down and read some of it while it went across the screen. So... Like I said, if you're just interested in the army men stuff, you may not want to sit through this, and that's okay, I understand. Like I said earlier, I'm really just doing this for myself. So, if you want to stick around and listen to some of the poetry I've written, grab a seat, because here we go. After much communication, recommendation, asphyxiation, arbitration, rationalization, relaxation, Maybe some procrastination, a lot of inebriation, and finally, celebration. Our answer may leave you searching for some consultation. How many chickens does the orange knock on the stepladder to get to the other side? Why do Jew, Catholic, and Muslim walk into a bar? I never knew my real ladder. Knock, knock, come in. Who's there? I lost my job at the origami factory. Didn't you laugh? Neither did I. I punched a baby in the face. I punched a baby in the face. I punched a baby in the face to put it in its place. I hit that baby in the eye. Then I kicked him in the thigh. When I did, he began to cry and cry and cry and cry. So I punched him in the ear. Then I offered him a beer. And when he took a sip and cheered, I kicked him in the rear. Then I clocked him in the nose so that he may never smell a rose. When he fell, he made a pose of a misshapen garden hose. I punched a baby in the face. I punched a baby in the face. I punched a baby in the face to put it in its place. Up past Highway 47 and over on County Road 11, follow it through some bushes and trees, and then, eventually, you'll find a slippery slope. It's about 108,000 feet high. Wait, wait, no, not that fast. Stop running. Oh, no, the slope you passed. Well, maybe it, the fall's not so bad. Although, about 108,000 feet high is pretty rad. Mr. Thwop and Sally Fly were sitting together side by side. Then Sally Fly asked a question of why. Why do we die? Mr. Thwop replied with a pop. Why do bunny rabbits hop? Why do riders who are riding stop? Why is it good to cut out slop? Sally Fly replied without being tongue-tied. Rabbits hop to fill the sky. Riders stop because the end arrived. Cutting out slop makes you feel nice inside. Mr. Thwop popped more questions like a cop. When fish are on land, why do they flop? Why do horses like to gallop? Why, when you're angry, do you stop? Sally Fly was tied with more questions inside. Fish flop because water is their guide. Horses gallop because that's how they ride. Angry people stop to let out their cries. Mr. Thwop could not be topped. We die so that we can feel the sky. We die because the end has arrived. When we die, the bad stuff goes aside. For it makes us feel real nice inside. As for the people left behind, they'll flop like fish with no water nearby. They'll run like horses away to hide, just so they can stop angrily and cry. This raised more questions for Sally Fly. Why do they die if they know I'll cry? 
Why can they vanish right from our lives? Why don't sometimes we can't say bye? Mr. Thwop thought on that prompt. Why do rocks thrown in water plop? How come sometimes we must mop? Why does rain sometimes have to drop? Sally Fly let out a sigh. Rocks plop when they're thrown from up high. We must mop to clean up messes where they lie. Rain must drop when clouds are too full, and they must be released like Bounty's crew did Bly. Mr. Thwop was impressed with Miss Fly. Sometimes, when thrown down from up high, we turn into a mess where we lie. And, during this, we will begin to cry, just like good old Admiral Bly. Mr. Thwop stood up next to Miss Fly. We don't control who lives and who dies, so don't try to, Mrs. Fly. But when you die, you'll touch the sky. And even though your end has arrived, many will love you and you won't vanish from their minds. They'll be thrown down from rock bottom from up high. And as a mess, they will start to cry. They'll flop like fish removed from water's guide. And they'll gallop away to try and hide. Or they will let it pour like raindrops and cry. And even if they can't say bye, they'll treasure you, unlike Bounty's crew did Bly. And sure, they'll cry and cry and cry and stop and stop and stop and pry at why and why and why and why did they get left by themselves on this side. But if they give it just a tad bit of time, their wounds will heal while their memory stays alive. And they'll feel real nice inside. I really don't like poetry, and that's all I have to say. Got nothing against the medium. I just think it's really gay. Poetry is really stupid, and also kinda dumb, for it lacks masculinity, and it's also not much fun. Poems can be complicated. Poems can be too sad. Poems are antiquated, and I think of them as a passing fad. Edgar Allan Poe can turn around and go. Robert Frost can get lost, William Shakespeare can disappear, and Dr. Seuss can leave via caboose. In short, I don't like poems, I don't think they're all that great. And to put my point justly, I wrote this poetry theme mistake. I don't really know where to go, or what fate that I did win. But at that dark tunnel there's a light that cries, come in, come in. I guess I'll go see where it leads and make my way to the end. For that there light is calling me, and it cries, come in, come in. We bought a stegosaurus from our pal Yom Kaporus, although it wasn't for us, but for our buddy Horus. Though the thing that really floored us about this stegosaurus was that it was another dinosaurus, one that's carnivorous and it ate our buddy Horus. When we finally go up high, there's a big old line, and in front of those big old golden gates are piles and piles of trinkets and waste. Walkers, wheelchairs, litters, and canes, oxygen tanks and sheets with stains, tossed to the side by newcomers all around after they hear that trumpet sound. St. Peter stands up at his post, toss him, he shouts, toss him out. Piles and piles of trash around, empty rifles and broken spears, bloody swords from ear to ear, and as the line moves near and near, they listen up so they can hear. St. Peter and those trumpets sing, toss him, toss him, toss him out. Broken clubs and pointy sticks piled up a bit too quick. Shot down planes and blowed up tanks and several trillion bullets make. A pile bigger than the earth, but their receivers receive rebirth off of planet earth. Hospital gowns strewn around, army uniforms litter the ground. Empty bowls and dry canteens from as far as the eye can see. So come foul up in line, because waiting on that other side are piles and piles of loved ones there. And luckily, they're everywhere. Just listen for that trumpet sound, and for St. Peter shouting loud, toss em, toss em, toss em out. 
So there you guys have it. If you stuck around to the end, you are a real Plastic Commander fan. And if not, well, I totally get it. It's not my usual content, but it is something I just wanted to do. And if you did watch the whole thing, thank you. And don't worry, there will be some more Army Men content coming out in the next couple of days. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So I'm the Plastic Commander. Thanks for watching.